Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. This is Bucket Ponds, and my name is Terry. Uh, today we are building a beautiful green water ostracod live culture. I'm going to show you how to build a tank for ostracods out of a jar. I'm going to show you how to care for them, how to feed them, how to hatch their eggs, and all the good stuff that you need to know to get started. I've never seen anyone use green algae for its visual appeal, so we're going to apply that to this tank, and you're going to love it. So let's jump right in. This is a completely round spherical jar and it will not stand up on its own. So we needed to make a little stand for it and I think that's pretty decent. Uh, the first thing that we're going to add to our aquarium is some river silt. And uh, this is very rich and uh, very fertile. It'll help us to grow uh, green water algae for a long period. If you don't have access to river silt, you can use uh, ADA power sand if you would like to spend some money on this stuff. Or you can use the uh, Wallstad method, which would work fine in an aquarium like this. This amount of sand is pretty much perfect. Uh, we don't want to add too much substrate as it will uh, displace a lot of water from the aquarium. And we need quite a bit of water in a small jar like this to raise as many ostracods as possible. Uh, next up, we're going to add some hardscape. Uh, we're using river pebbles and some uh, lava rock from one of my established aquariums. This will increase the surface area of the jar, and it will encourage our beneficial bacteria to replicate more easily. Now I'm going to lean the jar to the side a bit. Uh, this will make it easier for us to manipulate items inside of the aquarium while also adding an interesting uh, visual angle to the tank as well. Now we're adding some chlorella vulgaris algae. This is a green water algae, it's a phytoplankton. And the ostracods are filter feeders, uh, meaning that they will pull little bits of algae out of the aquarium, out of the water, and they will consume it. So uh, this green water is a readily available food source for them. And it's also going to add a very interesting look to the tank. I haven't seen anybody try to use green water in a uh, artistic way. So I wanted to show you that it can be very useful and uh, very helpful for an ostracod aquarium. while also uh, making it uh, somewhat interesting to look at. Next up, we're adding some small grass plants to the tank. I have no idea what species these grass plants are but I have been raising them for a few years in various aquariums and I know that they will grow underwater without any issues. They will act as a bit of filtration for the tank and they will also give the ostracods a place to roost. They will perch upon plants and hardscape and uh, it's kind of cool like a bird landing on a tree branch. So we want to include quite a few of these small grass plants uh, just to act as a uh, addition to the tank here. You can use hornwort or really any aquatic plant that doesn't grow too fast uh, for a project like this. And now we're just going to wipe off the uh, little bit of sand and debris that has gotten on the jar uh, during setup. But already I'm pretty impressed with the look of this aquarium and I think it will make a nice addition to our collection. Over the years, I have built 30 or 40 small jar aquariums, and we're getting pretty good at it. So don't feel discouraged if your first jar aquariums look a little strange. Uh, but now we're going to add live specimens from our microfauna aquarium. I have a full playlist about this tank on my channel, and I will link to the videos in the description here. But this is my microfauna aquarium. It is full of infusoria, detritus worms, bladder snails, and of course ostracods. And now we're going to take a few samples with my pipette. It's okay if we happen to get some detritus worms in here, or some bladder snails. Even the infusoria would be fine, though our main objective is to acquire some ostracods for our new project. I ended up using some specimen jars, uh, some small cups, to uh, take samples from the microfauna aquarium. The pipette um, just wasn't doing the job. So we're just going to dump them right in there. This won't hurt the ostracods at all. And the water conditions are very similar, though, you know, they are a bit different. This tank is more focused on the green water aspect. 
So ostracods are very easy to raise, and it turns out that they lay two different kinds of eggs. They have uh, their normal eggs, which will hatch and develop as the ostracods live in the aquarium. And they also have winter eggs, which will uh, have to be dried out and then rehydrated in order for them to hatch. Uh, this is a survival strategy that the ostracods uh, make use of. Uh, just imagine a vernal pool or a temporary pond that dries up during the summertime, and then in the winter when the rains come, uh, the pond will refill, and then all of the ostracod eggs will hatch. So uh, they are very forgiving. If your tank happens to crash, or maybe uh, your cat knocks it off a shelf and it dumps out, uh, you can dry out the substrate and then rehydrate it, and all of your winter eggs will hatch, and you'll have another couple hundred ostracods to play with. You can use this to your advantage to trigger mass hatching waves in your aquariums, and I plan on doing that with this particular tank as time goes by. You'll notice the ostracods hit a certain point, a certain population density, where they will stop laying so many of their normal eggs, and they'll start laying more of your winter eggs. And when that time comes, I'll harvest most of the ostracods, I'll dry the tank out, and then I'll rehydrate it, and we'll hatch a couple thousand of them. They're pretty cool in that way. You can also simulate this uh, behavior by doing a 50% water change. Uh, but that won't work until the tank has run for quite a while. Uh, here at the start, we don't have any ostracot eggs in the bottom, so we'll have to wait and allow the tank to develop over time. Uh, but eventually, in six months or so, we'll be able to trigger these massive waves of population growth. If you look closely at the aquarium, you will see a few small dots swimming around the tank, and those are the ostracods, the very first ostracods in our new project. They look uh, pretty active, and I'm happy with the setup for this tank. We also have a few bladder snails, which made it in here. And uh, they exist in almost every project that I put together here at Bucket Ponds. But we've come to adore them over time, and bladder snails are very beneficial. They will help to clean the glass and prevent any unwanted algae from growing on the aquarium and blocking light from getting inside. So the bladder snails are beneficial in this project. If you don't have any bladder snails, that's okay. They are not a requirement, but they definitely do not hurt if you happen to have some. So guys, I hope I helped you out with setting up your very first ostracod live culture. Um, here I'm adding some more grass plants. We had a few extra laying around and I didn't want to waste them. But yeah, I hope that you enjoyed the video. Uh, this project came out to a, a great start and we should be off to a, uh, a pretty good place here with our ostracods for the future. Alright guys, so that's the green water ostracod culture. It came out really nice. It looks really cool. And uh, yeah, I hope that you uh, enjoyed the video. Hope that I helped you with your first ostracod experiments. They're very easy to care for, they're very forgiving, and they're tons of fun to raise. So yeah, please enjoy your aquariums guys. I hope you have a lot of success with your ostracod experiments. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Please check out my channel for more content. This is Bucket Ponds. My name is Terry. And uh, please like and subscribe. Helps me out a lot. Doesn't cost you anything. And there's tons of other videos on my channel. I make weekly videos and I'm happy to share them with you. So I'll see you next time. Have a great day. Some people think I'm an alien. <laughs> alien. Mars. <laughs> exactly. Alien. Alien. Uh, some people think I'm an alien. <laughs> alien. Mars. <laughs> exactly. Mars. <laughs> exactly. Mars. <laughs> exactly. Mars. 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 Exactly.